Hello, everyone. This is Mike Garcia, former Michael Jackson bodyguard. I'm in an interview with Red Jackson. Um, used to be his bodyguard for his last remaining years. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome, everyone. I'm Red Jackson, and today I have the pleasure of being joined by Mike Garcia. How are you today, Mike? Doing fantastic here in Las Vegas. Thank you for having me. Of course. I mean, thank you for joining me today. So first off, can you introduce yourself, give my viewers a brief overview of your career and some of your most well-known clients in the security and bodyguard industry? Well, my name is Mike Garcia. I've been a bodyguard out here in Las Vegas since probably about the 90s. Um, I've carried a, a lot of clients throughout the years. Um, most of them, I can't really say their names because of uh, mm. uh, confidentiality, but um, definitely... Um, I have worked for many of them out in Los Angeles, such as William Shatner, uh, Lindsay Lohan. I used to take care of Miley Cyrus when she used to come here to Las Vegas. Um, I saw Britney a few times, uh, mostly people in the entertainment, but I also have clients in the uh, private sector as well. Um, here in Las Vegas, uh, while out on, out on a uh, on assignment, got a call uh, for Mr. Jackson and uh, ended up working him for him continuously uh, I believe it was from 2006 to about almost 2009 so uh, we were supposed to go with him out to London and um, as everyone knows those plans fell short yeah but being a bodyguard I mean it's such a unique job so I want to know a bit about how that started so how and when did you become involved in this whole sort of security industry and what training was required so for myself um here in las vegas I, you know i came at a time that was really uh, at its pinnacle for executive protection the casinos didn't have any of their uh specialty uh security come off property so that gave us an, a great opportunity for us to um, capitalize on that market so from there, we, you know, we took care of a lot of people that were coming here, you know, within the late 90s and the early 2000s and whatnot. I went away for a little bit to the Middle East for a few years and came back and uh, picked up where I, where I left off. And I met with some people um, who are, you know, a lot older than me. And uh, they kind of took me under their wing. Um, they kind of took me under their wing and put me some training that they uh, that they felt sufficient. And I kind of ran with with that. Those guys now have retired and worked now work in gun shops and whatnot. And I kind of take care of their clients in the meantime. So I've been very fortunate, to be honest with you. Uh, right place, a lot of times, right place, right time. Um, but, I, but I've worked, you know, I've worked the, the, uh, the minor style of detail work and those, you know, hard work pays off. So, you know, I ended up working for, I ended up working for, I did a detail for the Prince of Kurdistan um, and some, you know, very important people. Yeah. So what would you say are your favorite aspects of the job? Don't you agree that it's, you know, a very sort of high risk, high pressure one? I think it's the thrill. Um, I think it's the thrill. I think it's the uh, being able to transport someone to another location without any indication Um in, in uh, it is kind of a count and mouse game in which that if you can, you can really kind of uh, master it, it can really be interesting for you. But you learned a lot of things. You meet a lot of interesting people. And I'm not meaning client wise, but as far as uh, other um, people who are in the executive protection business. So it, it's great, you know, to, to really network. You get to see a lot of great, great things, but it is a demanding job. Um, I've kind of pulled back a little bit from doing so much and started my own hospitality company. Um, just because of the demand and because I'm getting a lot older. Um, yeah. um, but definitely, uh, I'm doing a lot of interviews for uh, consulting and things of that nature. But um, I definitely love the business. I love the aspect of meeting new people, the excitement and the travel. Absolutely. So take me back to when you first met Michael Jackson. Do you recall your first meeting and what were your sort of <laughs> perceptions of him beforehand? I uh, <clears throat> so I uh, I I had just got home from another detail and I got a call from Bill Whitfield, um, and Bill's exact words were, "Hey, I heard that you do uh, bodyguarding around Las Vegas, and um, you know this this is a 
great detail for you and I can't tell you who it is. And I had known Bill uh, prior to that. And so, you know, I was kind of telling him, you know, tell me, you know, tell me who it is and this and that. And this is, this is two days before Christmas in, in 06. And, um, you know, I had people in town and whatnot. So I was kind of hesitant and he, and all Bill kept telling me was that, you know, just trust me on this, meet me at this house and, um, you know, you won't be disappointed. I ended up going the following morning and uh, as I'm sitting there uh, waiting for the client to come downstairs, um, the children came down, Paris and Blanket and Prince, they all came down the stairs. And as soon as I saw that, I had automatically knew who I was working for. Mm -hmm. And um, that was my first introduction to him. And, you know, they introduced me to him and Mr. Jackson. And um, from there on, you know, we, uh, we took off and what turned into a weekend um, uh, I don't want to say gig, but a weekend job turned it into several years, and we and next wow. thing I know, we're we're his guys, and he's telling everybody that me, Bill, and BJ, uh, Javon are his guys. So that's the way it started. Wow. So, what did you think of Michael beforehand, and how did your perceptions change after getting to know him? Well, I tell you what, I've always been a Michael Jackson fan uh, since yeah. I was a child. Um, you know, I mean, like everyone else, always enjoyed his music, enjoyed, you know, what he was doing on TV. I can still remember him doing the moonwalk when I first saw it on TV. I mean, everything. So, you know, that part of it was um, the fan part of it just got me more excited for it, probably more than anyone. I mean, it's Michael Jackson, right? Yeah. And uh, from then on, we just kind of um, grew to see his situation and see where he was at in life and who was around him and what it is that I could do to help or what we could do, uh, you know, to help make his uh, life a lot more easier. So what was Michael's lifestyle like at the time? Would you say that you were all living in luxury? Well, I'll tell you this. Um, <clears throat> other uh, other uh, individuals that, that I was with, uh, with Mr. Jackson, have gone on and talk about his finances and things of that nature. Um, I don't, you know, we didn't know, I, and I honestly, we didn't know too much about his finances because it's none of our business, number one. And number two, um, that's not our department. The the financial uh, rumors or whatnot that was going around, the only financial um, things I found a problem with was our pay, our paychecks, you know, getting paid on time and things of that nature. But as far as anything else, him being broke and all these rumors and things like that. I mean, we were staying in Four Seasons. We were staying in a lot of great places and whatnot. Um, I think we, I think to be honest with you, in all fairness, I think um, me, Bill and BJ came in at a time in which he was in a transition to making things his own, uh, to handling things his own way or whatnot. And we might've got into the mix of that transi transition. So like I said, I don't want to speak too much on, on, on his finances and say he was this and he was that. I just know that our paychecks were not coming in and uh, some of that was on the um, responsibility of others that didn't live up to their uh, responsibilities. But as far as anything with uh, finances, I mean, we did all right. We're still eating good and we're still traveling. Yeah. You mentioned that your paychecks weren't coming in at a time. So, you're, I mean, you're risking your life to protect the most famous person on earth. Do you ever think, you know, hold on, is this all worth it? Should I be doing this? Well, I tell you what, I think honestly it comes down, and, I, and I'm not trying to blow our own horn here, but I think it honestly comes down to uh, what kind of person you are. Um, and we knew the situation in which that, you know, like I said, the transition he was going through, and there was no, nobody else around except his children to leave someone like that to see what was going on. And, you know, we could see that, you know, the, the naiveness in him and whatnot. And, and to leave somebody like that after you've been protecting, it can get kind of, um, it can get kind of uh, uh, a touchy situation as far as what you're actually there for. And everybody, you know, I get it. You're there for, you know, you're there for a job and you're there for this, but at the same time, you got to have some kind of humanity to, you know, um, yeah. to really kind of absorb the situation. And I think, with us three during that time, we were kind of talking to each other in the, in the sense of what we need to do um, outside of being paid. It was hard on our families. It was hard on on our on us financially, but we knew the seriousness of the situation, and we definitely, um, 
you know, tried to do as much as we could. And again, he, there was other people that was responsible for uh, his finances. And I believe that maybe they were, in my opinion, they were trying to maybe get us out of there um, to put their own people in. Um, So we kind of felt that and we kind of decided, you know what, let's go ahead and stick this out and be there for the benefit of Mr. Jackson. Absolutely. And I'm sure that meant a lot to Michael at the time because, you know, a lot was happening in his life and he was around some interesting people from what I've heard. Yes. Did you ever have any interesting encounters with fans or with paparazzi? Which was the biggest threat to you? And would they usually discover Michael's location? You know, honestly, um, I don't know what their names are, uh, but, they're, you know, he's got quite a few fans. And I'll, I'll be honest, he's probably got the best fans that I've ever come across on cele- um, working for celebrities. And his fans treat everyone with a lot more respect and love. I think I think I think the, the word is love. Um, his fans are full of love, so they don't necessarily give us problems. Um it's okay to be a fan of his and admire him and whatnot. Um, but it's, it, they've never um, actually came into a situation to where they've gotten out of hand. Now that's his fan. There's other people in which that uh, can get obsessed for other reasons. And those people, um, which I honestly don't want to speak on too much because of the fact of uh, just le- legality and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I don't, um, um, but there is people who do take things into their own hands and, we have to, you know, do some restraining. Right, right. And it must have been so intense with the paparazzi, though, because Michael was so confidential of his children's image at that time. Yeah, you know, talking about a person who people can get $50,000 to $100,000 from, you know, $150,000 from a picture. Um, you know, it, it, you know, getting him walking in an awkward way or something you know i mean it, it, it's really crazy how they really chastised him and, and waited for him to do something or do that or that just to make a dollar off him and so you had those kind of people who were doing that um you know but he, the thing about mr jackson is that he was fully aware of his surroundings he was fully aware of the situation and he definitely had his children um trained in that manner they knew exactly what to do and, and and how to handle situations when situations occurred right so what was he like as a father and what sort of relationship did the bodyguards have with his children well he was a single father i mean and yeah. i see that in this in, in the sense of i remember us being out in virginia and you know and, and whatnot and even here in las vegas where he would come out and talk to us and he would have jelly on his shirt. And, you know, he, I mean, he, he was, he was taking care of three kids. He was, he was making them food. He was, you know, being, he was very involved in their life, you know, and really wanted them to kind of see uh, the arts of the world um, and learn about art and learn about education. He was very big on education um, with them. I mean, huge on education to where he would, he would interview, us on certain questions you know for instance you go see an imax uh, educational imax movie with dinosaurs and whatnot i mean everybody in the car is getting questioned on on the movie so yeah. as a father doing what he could uh, i think i believe he was amazing yeah so do you think they knew the extent of their father's fame i don't think they knew at that time i i follow them now on social media and um and I love what 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 Prince is doing when you know with his foundation. I love what he's doing uh, in helping people, and I believe that's that's his calling, uh, in which he was taught by his father. And I love what Blanket and Paris. You know, Paris is looking beautiful. She's into music. Um, you know, good kids, definitely great kids on it. So, would he ever show his children, you know, videos of his performances? Would he kind of introduce them to his work? No, I don't. I don't think the children actually knew how big he was, or yeah, how much of a major major figure he was in the world. Because he wasn't like that in front of them. You know, he wasn't like, oh, watch my videos, watch this, watch it. <laughs> he he was more into other people's art. He loved watching other people's art. Um, 
Mr. Jackson, you know, I've gone on to work for other people and, and, and not the ones that I just mentioned, but other people and stuff. And, and I came into a disappointment on, the, on some people because I worked for Mr. Jackson, who was probably one of the most humblest people, I've, you know, celebrities ever came across. And at his magnitude, you know, for him to be that humble was just amazing. Yeah. Um, so he, you know, it was, it was almost a perfect client. I'm basically a, a perfect client because yeah. he wasn't into himself. You know, he knew he was, he knew what he could do. He knew his impact in the world. And to see a man from that stature be so humble was, is truly amazing. I think every other entertainer who, who, who thinks that they're uh, walking on water uh, can take a lesson from. For sure. So what was it like going outside of the property with Michael? Did it involve much planning or was it more spontaneous? I've heard he used disguises and would use underground access to get into places. Well, uh, we definitely had to, well, everything is planned. Uh, yeah. You know, you, you, you definitely have to plan everything. You do advances and, and things whatnot. Make sure the facility is secured. You know where your exits are. You know, um, you know the staff that's going to be there. You have everything prepared. And that is that is the downside of somebody of his magnitude that yeah. has to live. You know, everything has to be, uh, everything has to be prepared and, 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 and set um, set before he can actually be advanced. And he, he understood that, you know, he, he knew the dangers, he knew, he, you know, he knew, uh, you know, what could happen, you know, and whatnot. So having a client, like I said, having a client that that's fully aware of if his surroundings and the situations, it was fantastic. Yeah. Did you ever get into any sticky situations? <laughs> uh, well, again, I don't, I don't want to speak on some things because some people came back and tried to take legal action um but there uh i mean there was a lot i mean you know sick situations it could be anything from when we when, you know i'm here at caesar's palace right now in boss face you know we came here uh for christmas shopping and the entire mall went insane and when i say the entire mall i mean the entire mall it was one word michael and the entire place was turned upside down and i think somebody posted that experience on youtube or something whatnot and, and you know and then you go to something uh when we were in times square you know and and uh we then you would see lion king and you know times square michael jackson is is not the best ideal place but he wanted to see the lion king and uh sure enough somebody yelled michael and the entire place went crazy we're literally having to peel people's hands off of him that are grabbing him um, and then we got a little bit of a chase uh, scene in which that we kind of uh, coordinated and they followed me instead of the main car. So, right. so we, uh, wow. yeah, a lot of those kind of things. So when something like that is happening, do you feel that pressure or are you more like, you know, just another day at work? I'm used to it. No, no, I think I think that's what makes uh, good security. And I think. I, you know, it's not standing there looking nice in a suit. It's basically what is what is it that you can do when when a situation arises and you got to act. And um, you know, when I got back uh, into town, you know, of course, you know, you get people who ask you, oh, you know, to to team up with you and whatnot. But you know, it's not about size. It's not about um, a lot of things. It's, it, it all comes down to how do they you know conduct themselves in a situation. Do they freak out? Do they run? Do they panic? Do they, you know, if you can find a great team in which they can conduct themselves um, in a situation, uh, you know, that's that's definitely what you're looking for. for. For myself, being out in the Middle East, I was chased. Uh, you know, I was, a lot of things happened to me out in the Middle East. I think that really helped me with a, with a person like Michael Jackson. So yeah. with, with that being said, I definitely, um, I definitely feel that, uh, uh, the aspects of being alert uh, and the aspects of, of uh, my surroundings probably came from my experience in the Middle East. Absolutely. So let's go back to your time with Michael for a moment. Would he receive any type of threats? Because there was a lot of controversy surrounding him. Yeah, there was there was people, uh, you know, that would kind of uh, leave notes, uh, messages, things of that nature. But, you know, the thing about that is, is if you, if you go and you chase every single, you know, situation like that, it's going to 
pull you away from your claim. It's going to pull you away from a lot yeah. of things. The only thing that you can uh, do is basically take those threats, adjust your team um, to be on the lookout for those things and keep moving forward. You know, with Mr. Jackson, we had to keep moving, right? We had to keep yeah. uh, they stay, you know, stay in this hotel and moving to this hotel and whatnot. I believe that he had maybe um, some other things happening in which that he did not discuss with us that were happening prior to us joining him. Um, okay. And maybe and and now and keep in mind he was probably you know at the time he was he was learning us as we were learning him right yeah um, for our own safety as well so it was it was a, a match of believing in each other um, and then you know him taking the advice of what we were saying we take him this way instead of that way if we go this way or that way, you know things of that and and it's, and sometimes you don't want to tell the client everything because the client's not in our business that's what we're hired for we're the professionals so right that makes sense so working as a bodyguard for michael jackson was there a moment that was just the most intense out of all of them oh it might have been i mean man it might have been when we were out there in new york and at times square i mean we, yeah we, yeah they we, I mean, it was quite some distance in which that they were chasing us. And, you know, we're not from New York, so we're kind of getting everything situated, you know, uh, in, 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 in our um, escape, I guess you'd say, and whatnot. And, you know, those kind of things can be tricky because, you know, New York's not Las Vegas. So, you know, it's a lot more congestion. We don't know the streets as well, you know, things of that nature or whatnot. But, you know, they, um, somebody tried to block me in and, you know, you just have to observe and adapt. Yeah. Did Michael have much of a social life or was he more secluded? <clears throat> Again, I, you know, I'm only going to speak from the time in which that we were there, right? Um, yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to insinuate that, that this is what he was, you know, in life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so for, for us, from what I observed, it was the fact that he seemed, um, coming to his own in handling his own business, his finances, you know, and everything else. Um, lonely wise, I'd say he probably has been lonely his entire life. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, imagine being in, of the, you know, of that status and, and not really being able to trust everybody. I mean, I heard things about his family and not being able to trust his family and this and that, uh, whether they're true or not, I don't know. I'm just going by you know, things I was hearing. And, um, you know, I think he knew how to handle it. I think he, yeah. I think it, 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 was he a little lonely? I think he knew how to handle it. And I think he knew how to keep himself um, occupied. And, I, and again, I, I, I think he knew who he could trust and who he couldn't trust. He was going through that transition. So I don't think... Um, and if somebody's going through that transition, I don't think they're lonely. I think they're just kind of finding themselves and being a little bit more content of the situation. That's a great answer. So would you ever see celebrity friends or family members coming to see Michael? Or was that something that didn't happen so much? Oh, yeah. His mother was there. His mother. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I stood in line. I stood in line when the Apple uh, iPhone came out. I stood in line for his mother and got her the phone. And then we put the pictures of the children in, in her phone um and uh mother was i mean she was she was very very nice to us father would come by maybe not so so uh friendly with us um but he would come by unannounced and things of that nature in which mr jackson did appreciate um and i'm not going to comment on their situation or their their relationship or whatnot or why mr jackson thought that way of of having this when his father came over but i um he definitely I, like i said he was he was at a time in which that i think he was trying to see what everybody was about let's take a quick break to learn about the sponsor of this video this is me the mobile app by myidol.com
how many people were in Michael's inner circle or in his team? Well, for us, during my time, it was only me, myself, uh, Bill Whitfield, and Javon Beard, BJ, um, and occasionally uh, Miss Grace, who was the nanny, and she would right. be there as well. Um, but that's it. You know, that was it. That was just us. Yeah, it was just us. And um, you had some other people that were uh, from another organization. And uh, but they. He, one of them was a primary um, security at the time in which that we got there. But uh, he he ended up leaving. And so then it ended wow. up just being a three. Wow. I mean, so you must have really gone to see you know, the real Michael Jackson, just you three and him. Wow. You know, it, it, well, to see Mr. Jackson standing there after he just made breakfast, worn out from children, is probably one of the best things I think his fans, I don't know if he would want his fans to see that, uh, you know, see him, you know, not in his attire or whatnot, but definitely yeah. uh, that was a great time to see him. You know, it, it showed the human side of him, you know, in which that I think a lot of people don't see, and which was great. You know, um, you know, any of these celebrities that walk around and act like they're too busy to take care of their children, they, they, they need to take a page from Mr. Jackson's book. For sure. For sure. So did you see much of a change in Michael during that time that you worked for him? Or was it all, just, you know, rather consistent? Well, like I said, I think he was going through a time in which he was he was starting to learn uh, who was actually by his side you know, yeah. who actually supported him and who was actually just making money off of him. Um, that, that, that uh, thinking probably started prior to him coming back to the United States. You know, we worked for him to, as soon as he got back to the United States. So um, yeah. I think he came back with that thinking uh, in place, you know, so maybe that's why he didn't rush to a whole lot of people or had a whole lot of people around him at the time, you know? So, uh, what a situation. I mean, honestly. Yeah. Do you, yeah, think you maybe, you maybe kind of, you maybe kind of think about some things I haven't thought about in a while. And, uh, you know, like I said, I think a lot of people could learn um, a lot of things from the way Mr. Jackson was from his work ethic to being a human. Yeah, absolutely. So he d didn't seem to trust too many people. He had a very close sort of circle. Did it take a while for you guys to sort of build that trust with him? Oh, absolutely. I think, I think what, you know, to be honest with you, I think uh, he kept us on. He was saying, you know, these are my guys, because at that point he'd realized that we, you know, we didn't have any affiliation or, or loyalty to anyone else. You know, it was just us, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, we weren't talking to any kind of news outlets and we didn't have, you know, we, we didn't talk to people who, um, you know, were trying to make a dollar from them or anything like that, which, which, you know, that kind of stuff was never, you know, none of our business anyway. But at, at the time, I think he, I think he noticed that, and I think that's why he really started to really open up to us. Yeah, for sure. Like I say, he was in a time in which he didn't trust anyone. You know, he's finally yeah. back into the country. He was finally starting to look around, and and you know, I'm sure people were being a little different. You know, when he got back, and and he saw those things. You know, and I think that's what he really uh, entrusted us and 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 fought with his management to keep us around. I'm sure, I mean, he had a reason not to trust people because he'd been through yes. a lot by that point, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't there, but I, I mean, I heard a rumor after the court case uh, before he left the country that he, there was like a, a some type of party or engagement afterwards in which that um, after the after the, you know, he was cleared by the courts and a lot of people didn't show up um, for that for that party or whatnot. And, you know, that's Hollywood. You know, that's Hollywood. But everybody's trying to save themselves and everybody's trying to keep their image and, and whatnot. And, you know, they're willing to risk friendships, you know, and, and, and those things. It's a lot of uh, Hollywood is is a lot of associations. Right. Yeah. Uh, not real friendships, but associations. And and uh, I think, uh, you know, when, like I said, when he came back into the country, I think he basically understood the situation walking into it. Yeah. So do you mind me asking, why did your work with Michael come to an end? Was it related to the This Is It concert? So we, when, we, um, when we got back and uh, we got back here to Las Vegas, 
BJ had um, moved on and um, he had moved on to and, and, and whatnot because at the time we had problems with our pay, you know, yeah. and myself, you know, I didn't have any children. And yeah, you know, Bill had a daughter and stuff like that. You know, BJ had little children. So BJ uh, had to step away and to go make uh, money, which that we still hadn't gotten paid on. Um, forgive me. I got to drive. I got to drive over to the next casino over here. I know. Uh, you might be able to see Las Vegas behind me. So yeah. the um, the uh, the aspect of uh, of us sitting around kind of um, you know dwindled because we had things to pay for, right? We were in a financial yeah. situation, so we were still kind of waiting on our money. Um, and uh, he went to Los Angeles, and so when he went to Los Angeles, we stayed here in Vegas um, to basically recoup what we could, you know, and um, it was a hard time, you know. Yeah, and uh, Bill was still contacting me, um, and I was getting offers out in Los Angeles, getting ready and, and, and whatnot. So I was going to be in Los Angeles anyway. The um, Bill was contacting me and letting me know that Boss Mr. Jackson was uh, wanting to bring us along to London, um, and he was basically making sure that our contracts and everything were done through the promotional group in which that he was dealing with. Yeah, that was my understanding um, throughout that in, throughout the, the last few months of his, of him being alive, um, that he wanted us there with him, and uh, of course, you know that never came to uh, fruition. And thanks to I know me and Bill are at the funeral at the Staples Center. Yeah, let's look back and reflect on some of your memories of Michael. So, do you recall any fo- funny moments you had with him? You know, um, there's one that just stands out in my mind, and I don't know if you want to say it's funny, but it's just truly amazing. And yeah. it was just it was it was seeing how intelligent he was. Um, we used to so upstairs in in one of the the uh, it was just a huge room. I don't know if it was a bedroom or whatnot, but it was just a huge room which we built a library in. And he was very big on books, yeah, very big on books. And no matter what, he always wanted to build the best library because he felt that because of technology, the libraries would be extinct one day. Mm-hmm. So we constantly lugged these books around with us. And this guy, <laughs> Mr. Jackson, could you could say the title of the book or you could say the author of the book. And I'm talking about just going up to the shelf and this is, a, you know, hundreds of books. And you could just snag one out of there and you could just say either the name or the author and he would know exactly what book it was or who the author was. <laughs> I mean, just amazing. Just seeing him, yeah. his, you know, seeing him amazing like that and, and how much history that he knew um, was really, uh, you know, he, he wasn't just a singer. He was very intelligent, you know, in yeah. everything. Um Absorb, absorbed everything, you know, so it was it was really great to be around somebody that intelligent that knew everything from dinosaurs to everything. So yeah. to pinpoint yeah. one, to be honest with you, it, 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 I'd be cheating the fans out of out of that, to be honest. With you. I, I would be more uh, I think I think I think the fans need to need, know more of his spirit and his spirit was so delightful. His spirit was so positive, you know, um, when you say, oh, you know, what was some of the being around somebody who's like that, there's never a dull moment or a bad moment. Yeah, there's never. You know, he was so full of life um, and, you know, see, listen to him singing, in, you know, in the, in, in the car when, you know, we're we're driving somewhere, you know, where I remember one time we were. Uh, I think it was the T was it T-Pain um, buy you a drink song. You know, the, you know, keep in mind, this is years ago, right? So it was that, yeah, team, yeah. When, that team buy you a drink song. And he's in the back, he's singing it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it is, yeah, yeah. It is Michael Jackson, you know, and it's it's really <laughs> awesome. You know, those kind of things, when you think about cool. it, it's really, you know, it's funny. You know, it's, it's just yeah. funny because it's his voice, but it's on these songs. So, yeah. Wow, that's one, of best, one of the best spirits I've ever been around, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. What did you learn with him? What has, you know, sort of stuck with you all this time? 
About Mr. Jackson? Yep. Man, so many things. I mean, you can go to the you can go to the theater and uh, see someone using hot sauce on their popcorn, and it will remind you of him. You know what I mean? Um, there's so many things. You know, I drive. You know, here in Vegas, I, you know, I drive in front of the uh, Planet Hollywood. You know, and I can remember him in the car saying. You know, slow down, slow down. I, I want to see this. And what he was looking at was the the exterior of Planet Hollywood because he consulted on it. You yeah. know, yeah, yeah. So, so just kind of things like that. You know, this, you know, Circus Circus, which you know I'm, I'm right here next to. I used to take the children. You know, he entrusted me to take the children by myself. You know, to Circus Circus, so they could have a great time. He knew he couldn't be there, and. Yeah. It me and it, it, it still to this day. Uh, I appreciate the fact that he had so much trust in me with those children, because when I would take them to say circus, circus, and you know, there's a place called Adventure Dome, and they could ride rides and all that kind of stuff, and buy candy and do all these things, and he couldn't be there for that. And in, I'm on the phone with him, basically giving him the play by play of what the children were doing. Yeah. Um, the fact that he entrusted me in something like that, at, at, at somebody so worldly, so, you know, so important as he was, um, has, you know, it has meant the, that, that part really meant the world to me. You, yeah. you entrust your children with me, you know, and um, oh. I'll, I'll never forget that. What did you learn from him? What was the biggest thing you learned? I would say, I would say being humble, you're learning from the, from, from the guy who's the most known man around the world. And, and, and if you walk away from somebody like, if you walk away, not being humble from Mr. Jackson, um, and you're not humble and you don't appreciate people and you don't try to help people, then you did then you must've just had a blindfold and had, and had earplugs the entire time you're with them. I think uh, since I since I've stopped working for him, I went on and I opened a uh, anti-bullying program here in Las Vegas. Oh, that's good. Um, cool. Yeah, I went on and did that with some people, and I went on and you know did some other things as far as helping people um, in in the aspect of their situation. I'm not going to go on and, and 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 hype myself up and say, oh, I'm doing this. But I mean, there's there's quite a few things in which that I uh, that I was doing and getting involved in that I knew I learned from Mr. Jackson. So how about any favorite memories or really standout conversations if you just had to pick a couple just to share with the fans? Oh, I, oh we'll see. I remember what, <laughs> and I, I'm only saying this because Floyd Mayweather is, is, you know, he's in the news and people know about Floyd, yeah. Floyd Mayweather. But I remember one time, um, uh, Oscar De La Hoya was a fan of his and Oscar De La Hoya would uh, actually get in contact with Mr. Jackson and always invite him, you know, to come to the boxing events and come to this and come to that. And I remember when, I think it was when Oscar De La Hoya fought Floyd Mayweather and uh, he was so animated. He was, he was, he, he had just gotten off the phone when I think when, when, with Oscar De La Hoya and he was, he was uh, telling us about who Oscar De La Hoya was going to fight, which is Floyd Mayweather, and he went on to say, "That that that guy, that that oh, he's so arrogant. He's so oh, he's a boxer. And he's so arrogant." And he was talking about Floyd Mayweather, you know. <laughs> and but the way he was doing it, you know, it, it, you could tell like he didn't appreciate uh, the the you know the way he that Floyd Mayweather was, you know. So. Yeah. Seeing him act that in that kind of way, or you know, seeing him act human, seeing him yeah. act personable, it, it, it was fantastic. And, and 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 it's really, um, I wish you know he would say certain things about loving people and, and certain things about his fans. I mean, he loved his fans tremendously, and I wish uh, there was some kind of recording of that that the fans 
could actually see, you know, when we're riding in the car and things like that and the things he would say and how much appreciation he had, uh, you know, for you and for, for everybody that, that adored him. Yeah. So you really got to see, you know, the human, the real Michael Jackson, but did you ever witness him? Did you ever witness him singing or dancing, you know, in a performing? Oh yeah. Yeah. So we, I tell people, you know, I didn't, go to any concerts with him and i think that was almost a blessing because then that's all i probably would have seen right yeah what we got to see was a man going through a transition to take to take hold of his life you know what i mean to 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 manage his own life and whatnot um and he had a friend by the name of brad and i think brad worked on his music he might be uh forgive me i'm i'm sorry his name was Brad Buxer, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. 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 Great guy. He used to fly used to fly into Las Vegas on his own plane. He used to fly himself here. Um, and uh, you know, I go pick up Brad, and Brad was really great with us, you know. I mean, really down to earth. I, I used to give Brad a ride back to his hotel. And Brad, um, him and Brad, Mr. Jackson and Brad, we had a we built a room in the back. We put in flooring, you know, wooden flooring so you could slide around. We had a 60 inch TV put on a, on a truss that had wheels that had a camera on top that he could see himself and he could push it around as he was dancing. Oh, God. Yeah. He can, he can, he, you know, he could dance and he could do all these things in front of it and he could dance around and, and he would fly Brad in and Brad would play the music and Brad would bring his music, you know, to Las Vegas and uh, his equipment and they would have a blast back there for hours, for hours. And yeah, you have to walk past outside you had to walk past that room which it had glass doors like glass doors and glass wall i guess and and uh, you had to walk past it to go use the restroom and we were using the restroom like four or five times just so we could see him <laughs> inside there just having a blast you know just him and brad you know and he was dancing and he was doing his thing and you know you're just kind of walking and you're just kind of watching it you know what i mean and and um that was awesome you know it, to, because for me it was awesome because of the fact that he, he was you saw somebody of that of that magnitude not on stage but legitimately having a great time yeah in his art you know what i mean truly embracing his art his god-given talent and and um and having a great time with his friend you know it, it's yeah. you watch bands and stuff and bands always have you know they go to like a bar and they do a couple songs and it's like the best thing ever right yeah, that's what I got from seeing him, you know, seeing yeah. him in, in, in his relaxed state of just having a great time, you know. That's beautiful. I mean, such great yeah. memories, too. Yeah, to- I, I remember I remember we were at a photo shoot in New York one time. Maybe it was Italian Vogue. And in the rip and the uh, photographer, he had worked with that photographer before. And the, the photographer said to him, you know, hey, loosen up. You know, loosen up, you know, da, 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 da. and and uh, somebody started playing his music and it was like, you know, it was yeah. he was Michael Jackson. And and just and it was only maybe six or seven of us. And I remember we were we were in New York and we we're just kind of standing there watching him just do his thing, you know, and, and the photographers just going nuts, just taking pictures left and right. I think it was Italian Vogue and us standing there just turn into a bunch of fanboys you know what i mean we all just kind of stood there just kind of looked at each other and smiled like we really wanted to say to each other this boy is bad this boy is awesome you know what i mean so yeah i'll I'll never forget that about mr jackson yeah so let's come back to the present so what are you working on at the moment and tell me more about your future ambitions so after Mr. Jackson, I went off, I, I left to Los Angeles and I was working for Lindsay Lohan and uh, William Shatner for quite, uh, for a little bit. Um, and we had some other celebrities um, that we were taking care of. And then I came back here to Las Vegas and uh, I started a company uh, called the Itinerary Agency. And basically for what we do is we're a concierge travel. We take care of everything that people uh, would like to do um, personally on their trips and things like that. We take care of flights, hotels, um, you know, things of that nature, basically writing itineraries for, for travelers, something which I did for a lot of celebrities. 
Yeah. Um, I'm almost 50 now. So I got to kind of, I don't have the, the spark in me to get up every day like I used to, but yeah. I do take care. I still take care of some clients in which I still, still come to here to Las Vegas. I uh, still do some consulting and whatnot, but um, I thought about doing a book, you know, um, yeah. you know, along the lines of doing a book. I think that'd be um, great. Well, I think, I, well, mine will definitely have a different twist on it from, from the, from uh, Bill and BJ uh, yeah. on it due to the fact that uh, I don't agree with what they did. Um, you mean? And I can kind of give the insights of my own experiences, such as, like I told you before, talking on him, giving him play by play with the children, you know, things of that nature. Um, yeah. But I'd like to donate the book uh, to charity. Uh, I've been telling people that I'd like to donate the book to help underprivileged children buy musical instruments. I think that's more of the, 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 the line of Mr. Jackson and what he would want. The only problem with that is finding people who, would, who want to do the same thing with you mm. uh, and put in work uh, for charity. And that's always been the problem uh, that yeah. I've been coming across. People want to make a movie. They say, oh, well, can we take it to a movie and, and make it into a movie? And I'll be honest, with you, I'm not into being the whole I'm not looking to be a celebrity. If any yeah. fan would like to talk to me about Mr. Jackson, I think it's our duty to kind of uh, give that experience to his fans. Yeah. You know, we, he wasn't just a private person that nobody knew about. This is a worldly figure that believed in helping uh, people and humanity. Yeah. Um, so you, in taking pride in that, I think it's a duty uh, for myself. And I can't speak for the other two guys, but it's a duty for myself to talk to people such as yourself. And, and give you any kind of information that you like. That's great. And I mean, thank you so, so much for that. I mean, as fans, we really appreciate it. And I think it'd be fantastic if you did that book. A, to share your memories with the fans, and B, you know, for a great cause that, I mean, Michael would yeah. absolutely approve of that. But I, I have no problem uh, joining somebody who wants, who wants to do a book together um, for the right reasons. But again, the you're getting people who who don't want to do it for the you know they want they they want to do it for their own income, yeah, and things like that. And you know I can't have I can't uh, assume that people will have the same type of want in this project as me. They didn't have the experience I did, right? Yeah. So maybe I might do a little bit of self publishing or something along those lines, you know, in the future. But in the meantime, like I said, if if any any fan uh, wants to hear any kind of story or anything related to mr jackson it's actually an honor you know to, to talk about yeah. so is that charity reason you know the reason why you weren't involved with the other bodyguards book i'm sorry say one more time so was that the reason why you weren't involved with the other bodyguards book yes yeah i i didn't believe in self-glorification i believe that we were there, we were there to do a job Okay. And um, when somebody entrusts you uh, with their private life, I don't think it's necessary for you to go out and really um, give your own version of it after they're gone. Right. Yeah, I agree. Well, that's great. So thank you. You're, so messing, you're messing with history. You're messing with history. You're messing with legacy. Uh, mm -hmm. And I've always felt that uh, who am I, Mike Garcia, who am I? um to, to alter his legacy or to alter um you know anything in front of his fans you know what i mean wow. I, I was i was assigned to a job um in which that i'm thankful that he and i uh had moments and and, and i got to experience those things like i said i learned a lot from him just about being humble and and um uh being realistic in life and, and I don't think you can put a price on it. I mean, as far as I know, I've already gotten paid for my service for him. Yeah, that's great. Now, finally, what advice would you give yourself, you know, looking back on your career? If you could talk to your younger self, what have you learned? And what do you know now that you wish you'd known back then? Uh, don't expect anything from anyone. Yeah. You know, don't expect for anything put in your own hard work. Um, and if you are looking for an easy way, uh, you're never going to receive it. 
you know, I, you know, right now, uh, my friend in which that I, I did all those other celebrities with out in Los Angeles moved here and I've been helping him with his company. And you get a lot of people who just kind of have this entitlement. And uh, I think that is destroying a lot of people is the entitlement, you know, and not, not, not uh, appreciating your journey. You know, not everybody is going to have the same type of um, not everybody will have the same type of life experiences and not everybody, you know, is, is, will always have the right moment. And if you do, you really have to appreciate that in which that was given to you. You know, a lot of people um, go through the thing in which that they expect what they what they feel entitled to. Um, and that's just not that's just not a good path to take. It yeah. really isn't. You know, you want to shake everyone's hand, um, you know, that you come across, you know, no matter their race, their color, their anything. And you definitely want to be realistic with everybody because you want to mean what you say and say what you mean, you know, and have that in, and carry that integrity. That's great advice. So thank you once again, Mike, for being here. It's been a pleasure. Before we go, do you have any social media or any way the fans can connect with you? Uh, just the same way you did, you know, I'm on Facebook, you know, I have an Instagram page and that's about it. I don't do anything outside of that or, 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 or whatnot. But I definitely would like to thank you, Red, uh, for, you. for, for interviewing me and, and, uh, taking your time into talk about Mr. Jackson, because it's people like you that keep his legacy going. And, and, uh, you know, it's besides him being a great entertainer, but you know, the, hum the human side of him. So, thank you. Um, I appreciate that. Of course, yeah. I mean, he's the king. So. Give me a platform to talk on that. Of course, I mean, gotta keep the legacy alive. You're doing good work, Red. Thank you. Have a great weekend. I'll talk to you, you soon. As well, Bye -bye. you as well. God bless.